welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. Today, we're gonna to be answering a question, well, or something that I hear often at the range. People say Remington 700s, well, they've lost their touch, they're no longer what to be recommended for long range shooting, and the way to go is the Ruger American Predator. Mm, that's something I hear occasionally. If I'm hearing it occasionally, it's probably being said fairly often. These rifles are not in the same price point. I'd just like to give my opinion as to why I disagree. So, the Ruger American Predator retails around 450 bucks US, while the Remington 700 is about 650. So, they're not in the same price point. It's kind of normal to expect the Remington 700 to be better. However, some people are willing to say the Ruger is better than the Remington 700. Well, that may be on some aspects, but not all. And maybe not all in the, where it's most important. So let's start this off with accuracy. So first of all, the Remington 700 has a 26 inch barrel. That is long and that is gonna get your bullets going pretty fast. Uh, the Ruger only has a 22 inch barrel, so that'll limit you in terms of speed, which kind of matter when you're doing long range, it just means you'll have to dial probably a little bit less. It doesn't necessarily affect accuracy though. So these are the groups that we got with the Remington 700. All right, so we're at the range. We're at 100 yards. Let's see just how accurate that we can get this rifle to be. In this video, we're gonna be using the Axel earmuffs. So these ones are actually really nice because you can actually listen to music at the same time that you shoot. And they are also noise canceling as most uh, shooting earmuffs are. And they're really, really nice and comfortable. are some pretty decent groups. Now we also use the Remington 700 at long range. I think we were shooting it at about 900 meters. So I'll have it on the screen. And it worked really, really well. It was really, really consistent. We were using the Hornady 178 grain ELDMs and it just loves those. It really, really loves those. This is a one in, eight, one in 10 inch twist. Um, so while the Ruger is a 6.5 Creedmoor, that that shouldn't really impact how accurate it's going to be. It's going to make a little bit of a difference in terms of ballistic performance, which generally should give it the upper hand in long range. However, at 100 meters, it was not a great success. All right, so we're at 100 meters. Well, let's see how good this puppy can do. Now, first thing I'd like to mention is the Ruger American Predator cannot single feed well at all uh, with this magazine, or with any other AICS magazine for that matter that I've tried. I've tried the uh, MDT AICS magazines, I've tried the factory one, and it just refuses to feed single feed. So, uh, yeah, that's a little bit of, I guess, a downside. Not really the end of the world, but not great. Also, the factory magazine doesn't clip in all that well. For example, even giving it a little thump here, not quite enough to get it seated. You gotta give it a a good thumb. <laughs> a bit more than I think it should be necessary. Also, the action. I mean, that time was smooth. It's getting smoother and smoother as you go. I probably have about 120 rounds through this rifle, and I still don't think it's all that smooth. You know, not quite as smooth, let's say, a factory Remington 700, at least when you're chambering. The action itself, when it's empty, isn't all that bad after about 50, 60 rounds. So it does take a while to smoothen itself out. Anyway, let's get shooting. Another thing is this action does not like to be pulled unless it's like you're pulling it perfectly straight, which I find kind of annoying. You know, it shouldn't really be the case for a rifle that's about, well, $650 Canadian on special. I think it's about $400 US. Also, you guys have kind of noticed that those groups don't look that great. Well, even after low development, this is probably our best standard deviation, which is about 15. Uh, it's still not printing the best groups. Honestly, what I think is the major uh, flaws of this rifle is, first and foremost, 
the trigger. It's really creepy. Like it, it starts to go back and then it stops again and then it goes. So if you thought you could give it a good pull from, from the original stopping point, you're going to be jerked at that second one and you're going to be throwing your shots off. Uh, secondly is the stock. This stock is very cheap plastic. It's kind of what you expect on most, you know, uh, entry level budget hunting rifles, which for hunting, you know, even these groups aren't, they're not going to like lose your deer at 100 meters. I mean, that is at 100 meters. Uh, even at 500 meters, you're still going to be hitting your target, which we will see in just a few moments. But realistically, this isn't really the best groups that I've seen on a budget rifle. Although most of the time on our budget rifles, we have them in chassis to make sure we can squeeze as much accuracy as we can out of them. However, this one we've chose to leave in its original factory configuration. Let's do a few more groups. And yes, you do have to be a bit, I find, I find aggressive with this action. It's not something you're gonna baby. It's not gonna run very well. Now you might be thinking, well, it, maybe it's the shooter. Maybe I didn't try hard enough. Um, on the Remington 700, I did the load development well, technically twice, but once for the 178 grain ELDMs, and then I just reconfirmed it to get the perfect note, and then I used that for the long range. With the Ruger American Predator, I did the load development one and a half times, and oh, I did not find anything that really this rifle just loved. Like, I, I've done many, many rifle reviews, and this one kind of left me going, ugh, okay. Kind of expected more, a lot more, I guess just because people always kind of tout the Ruger up to be so, so accurate. Now I have other Rugers and they are very accurate. This is my least accurate Ruger that I have ever owned. That doesn't mean that Rugers aren't accurate either. And one Remington 700 that's accurate doesn't mean all Remington 700s are now accurate. It just means the ones that I have for my sample are accurate and are not accurate. So it's you're gonna wanna look at a lot of reviews to see what a lot of people generally have to say. If a lot of people generally say they're accurate, they generally speaking are, which is usually the case with the Rugers. Online, a lot of people are saying that the Remington 700s aren't particularly accurate or as accurate anymore. They don't make them quite as good as they used to. My sample shot really, really well. So next, let's talk about the barreled action. So while we have the Ruger in front of us here, it has a 70 degree bolt throw. So that's, that's more convenient, for example, as opposed to thumping your thumb on the scope every time you're loading and unloading around. That is very convenient. Um, however, the action in this rifle feels more like a piece of agricultural machinery than it does a nice, smooth uh, bolt action smoothness, you know. So that's something I feel a little bit disappointed in. This has a three lug bolt, which is fine. It gives it the 70 degree bolt throw, which is convenient for that. And you also, you can get some rounds in fairly quickly with this bolt. One issue I have with this action is it tends to bind. So if you are not pushing quite straight, like for example, like this, if you're pushing slightly off, it'll bind like, like this. And that's not great but it's a budget rifle. What can you expect at $450 US? Well, I mean, there's more budget rifles that don't necessarily do that, so maybe we could have expected that not to happen, but it's going to happen at this price. This one does come with a Picatinny rail. This is a zero MOA rail, which should be fine for most varminting applications and should be good enough to get you out fairly long range. I mean, with a good scope on one of these rifles, um, it shouldn't really be an issue. Normally speaking, if it didn't come with a rail, I would just say go with a 20 MOA rail, go with an MDT 20 MOA rail. Actually, they make good quality rails. Um, that's what I'd normally recommend you to do, but this is fine. You know, until you actually need to, let's say, get that more MOA out of your scope, I wouldn't bother just going out and replacing the rail right away. Barrel on this is a 22 uh, inch barrel while the Remington 700 has a 26. 22 inch barrel will generally get you a little bit less velocity than a 26 inch barrel. So let's take a look at the Remington 700. So first of all, it does not come with the rail that's on it. It actually comes with no rail whatsoever. So you're actually gonna have to spend another, about $100 Canadian, actually about 80 from MDT, that's what about what they are. Or I guess that's about 60, 65 bucks US. So you are gonna have to spend a little bit more money to put a rail on this. So adding to the initial cost of the rifle before you can actually go shooting. So it makes this one 
slightly more expensive. So as I said, we have a 26 inch barrel. This one is not threaded, however, while the Ruger was. I did put a core brake V3 on this, which makes a really, really nice job at reducing recoil and muzzle jump. So if you're looking for a good, good muzzle brake, check out Cortax Solutions for the core brake V3. Um, so this has a 90 degree bolt throw. So which is generally speaking, well, it, it, some of it's personal preference, but you are going to thump your thumb on the scope occasionally if it's slightly too low or at what I think is a normal height or at most convenient height. Um, the bolt is moderately bigger than maybe some, but it could have been a little bit bigger for a, let's say, a varminting, a more tactile rifle or tactical rifle. It's not really a big issue, but it could have been better. Also, the bolt is quite smooth, so actually much more smooth compared to the Ruger. Not a Tika, however, but it is still very smooth. Also, one thing to note is while the Ruger takes AICS magazines, which I should have mentioned earlier, quite conveniently has a tab right here, you push this forward and your AICS magazine will drop. It even works very well with the MDT steel AICS magazines, which for some reason right now it does not want to. Oh, I pushed it too far. <laughs> but normally speaking, it works really well with this. And it'll even drop freely. So a pretty nice thing to have on such a budget, budget rifle. So the Remington 700 has a hinged core plate, which will dump your rounds all over the floor as you try to catch them. So <laughs> kind of inconvenient. And I feel at this price, they could have done a little bit better. But it is what it is. They're both somewhat budget rifles. So you kind of get a few trade-offs here and there on a few things. Next, let's talk about the trigger. The, on the Remington 700, they have the X Mark Pro, which is X Mark junk, if you ask me. Um, it's supposed to adjust between three and five pounds, while it only adjusts specifically on this one between 4.75 and five pounds. That makes no sense on paper. <laughs> but according to other reports I've read online, this seems like it's a moderately common issue where the Xmark Pro is not even able to adjust within its specified range. Some, of, some say it doesn't even adjust at all, which is pretty close to what we had. 4.75 to 5 pound, that's barely adjusting at all. So we actually replaced our Remington 700 trigger, the Xmark Pro, with the Kdex DX2 Evo, the single and dual stage trigger. It's actually changeable if you're not sure which one you're going to want. If let's say you're shopping for a trigger and you don't know if you should go with a single or dual stage trigger, um, I would recommend check out the Kdex DX2 because you can put it as a second stage. So you can have that pull and then it stops and it breaks, or you can just put it as a single stage where you just pull and it breaks. So that's a really cool thing to have. If you don't want to invest in buying one and then you don't like it and then buy another and then it's fine. So that's what I just recommend you do. It's a good trigger. Now the Ruger on the other hand is adjustable between 3.5 and 5 pounds. It's supposed to be adjustable between 3 and 5. So it's a little bit like half a pound heavier than it should. It's about plus or minus a quarter pound over and under. So like a whole half pound variation there. So really not great consistency. And also another thing is it has a lot of creep. It has a lot of creep. Well, the Remington 700 didn't have nearly as much creep, although it wasn't really adjustable. So there's like a lot of trade-offs right here. It's gonna be up to you to make up your mind which, which kind of features make that much of a difference to you. So both triggers are kind of terrible. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna leave you with that. But both have lots of aftermarket support so you can dump this trigger out of the old Ruger and put in a good trigger. Also, a friend of mine has a Ruger and he says the trigger breaks really, really nicely and there's very, very little creep as he brings it down. Now, that's a common thing I hear and see on more budget rifles. For example, I have two Remington 783s and um, that's like pretty much the equivalent or actually not the equivalent of this rifle, but it's a more budget rifle. And it's just, it gonna be, you're gonna see more inconsistencies with production. It's just gonna happen. They don't have the, the, the time to invest or else they'd have to up the price and it'd be a more expensive rifle, which most people don't wanna spend more money. So it just is what it is. So after market support, so both of these rifles, you're gonna be able to buy triggers, you're gonna be able to buy chassis for them, rails. You're gonna be able to replace the barrels once you cook this one out. You can put a muzzle brake on the Ruger. Um, on the Remington 700, it doesn't have threads, but you can still put a clamp on muzzle brakes. So we actually have our core brake uh, V3 by Cortax Solutions, and it's a clamp on, which holds very, very well, and does a really great job at uh, reducing recoil and limiting muzzle jump, which makes it easier to spot your own hits at long distances. So yes, like barrels for the Remington 700 are 
everywhere. Any reputable gunsmith can get you a barrel swapped up and you'll be ready to go with your Remington 700 in no time. Stocks are everywhere. Every company that makes rifle stocks is going to make them for the Remington 700. No questions asked. Um, rails as well. I generally speaking go with MDT. This one I believe is a Weaver. It's worked fine so far. Um, triggers, like I said, this one's a Kdex DX2 Evo. Actually what we did to the stock um, for this one is we put it in a Boyd's thumb hole stock. Man, Boyd's makes some seriously good looking stocks. Both of the stocks on these rifles, this one is not free floated. The Remington 700 in its SPS configuration is not free floated. While the Ruger American Predator, however, is. I mean, they're both very cheap stocks and it's very flimsy, very, very flimsy, but it is free floated. So that's kind of my thoughts on what you should do if you are considering your next budget rifle and someone tells you, buy one of this, buy this one over that one. There are some trade-offs that you are going to have to consider when choosing them. So thanks for watching Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. I'll see you next time. If you have any questions, leave them in the descriptions below. I will answer them for you. If you want to see other comparisons between other rifles that I've done, you want to see them compared to one of these two rifles, or other of the rifles that I've done. I generally speak and keep them just so I can do these comparisons for you. So thanks for watching Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews.